How much are brands, well, are the artists that you represent hurting right now? How are they looking for sources of income? How much are they depending on your relationship with brands at the moment when they can't go out and sing the music, perform as they used to? Well, uh, thank you for having me on this busy day. Um, the, you know, given this pandemic, the situation for, for, for most creators are um, they knew they could make their money doing live performances and, and personal appearances. And because that market is dried up, uh, they need an alternative solution in order to create revenue. United Masters um, allows artists to go directly to streaming platforms and bypass record companies. It allows artists to own their rights. And we've seen tremendous growth and success uh, since we launched as a result of it. And SelectCon is a conference today that we are u utilizing to educate artists, entrepreneurs about making money, um, opportunities, owning their rights, and becoming successful. I think that yep. out of this pandemic, that legacy record companies are going to be a way of the past, and artists will be going direct through United Masses going forward. So when we talk about those opportunities, Steve, I mean, obviously, sort of the legacy model uh, of the record industry has already been in decline for years. Uh, are those opportunities, are they just about music, or are you trying to sort of push these, uh, these men and women towards whether something more than just uh, making music and touring? So, yeah, because what I've also learned on the other side is not only do artists not want to work with record companies, but brands don't like working with record companies. So we've been, we've been able, between United Masters um, and my company, Translation, my marketing services company, to put artists and brands together directly. Um, it's something that I've done for years, whether it be Jay-Z and Reebok and Beyonce and fragrance deals and things. I've, I've built a reputation of doing that um, with some of the biggest artists in the world. Now, I'm able to do this at massive scale. And um, we signed a deal with ESPN. We signed a deal with um, Apple Music. We signed a deal with the NBA, in which they, those brands are utilizing independent artists' music inside right. of their communications, inside their advertising. And it creates this opportunity where independent artists can get their music heard by millions because, because going to United Masters and having these opportunities with these brands allows their music to get um, streamed and, and showcased across different media platforms. Yeah. Steve, I'm interested, of course, you represent, in large part, African-American artists in particular. And we are at a moment of not only a global pandemic, but a, a global reckoning on the need for equality, in particular racial equality. How do you ensure that you're teaming the people you represent with brands that can speak authentically to that and that in some way we're not seeing a mismanagement of certain brands trying to suddenly get with a program, but perhaps talking the talk but not always walking the walk? Yes, you know what? I love the fact that you brought that up. Look, I believe generally that the advertising business is supposed to be the business on the forefront of seeing where trends are going and are supposed to be on the forefront of changing perception. Um, I am disappointed in the advertising business because since everything has come up recently around Black Lives Matter, they're acting surprised as if they didn't see this happening when the advertising and media business notoriously has not been fair and has not been forthright and has not been putting forth African-Americans and African-American culture in the most brightest light. Um, I'm using this opportunity that we have right now to course correct this. So on one side, yes, we're helping these artists become free entrepreneurs, not signing their rights away to record companies mm -hmm. and getting hurt in the process. We've seen that movie many, many times. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we're educating brands, helping teach them on the best practices on how do you promote African-Americans, how do you help African-American music, how do you help these young entrepreneurs succeed? And you can't yeah. look back and say, we didn't know this was happening. It's a surprise. No, it's not a surprise. This is something that you've seen for many, many years, and you were never incentivized to fix it. You are incentivized to fix it now, and that is exactly what my purpose is and why I've built this company.
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see what the long-term trend is here, Steve, whether these companies sort of revert back to their comfort zones. I mean, black is the new black for the moment. But when you talk about working with these um, advertisers and these brands, uh, with your artists and with other black artists, do you fear that some of these artists get will sort of get segmented off into only sort of marketing towards other black people. Is there a broader opportunity for these people in working with their brand so their music and their culture is much is sort of pushed out much more to the broad base masses? I think segmentation is bias. I think segmentation was some marketing algorithm that actually promoted racism. I don't think segmentation is something that um, has been helpful at all towards African Americans. I don't think that young people buy in to segmentation. I think people like good music, people like bad music. And, it, and it, I'll give you an example of this. I used to go into the beauty aisles at Target or Walmart, and you'd see the African-American beauty section. And I'm sitting there yeah. going, why does black products have to be in the black section? Why can't you put beauty products in alphabetical order? But that's segmentation. Segmentation in media, segmentation at retail is wrong. And I am going to use my 30 years of being in this business, my 30 years of wisdom and knowledge and understanding to help break down these barriers. And I'm just thankful that this is a time that the world is focused on it. You're seeing young, diverse people come together and march in peaceful ways that are about unity. And if we can build businesses and build opportunities and teach brands how to yeah. market in a unified way, then I think we can come out of this better than we went in.